Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis Webinar. My name is Troy. I'm a Senior Account Manager with ABBA Trade. I'll be leading the session. Uh, as we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box to let me know that you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right, or let me know if you have any issues. Okay, seems we're up and running fine. Thank you for the responses. Uh, hello, Natalie. Thank you for coming. Uh, all right, so fundamental analysis is the focus today. Uh, as we get going, keep in mind, uh, as always, that all investments have risk. Uh, each and every trade you take has the possibility of bringing losses. Uh, but also, obviously, the whole reason we're here is that each and every trade has a good potential to bring profits as well. So the idea is to manage your risk in a way that makes sense. Uh, we'll go over some ideas about managing risk, how the Web Trader platform and the Avatrade Go app both help uh, to do that with some of the features that are on those uh, platform options compared to the standard MT4, MT5 accounts. Uh, also, there's some ideas we might go over uh, be beyond just stop loss with uh, the ABBA Protect feature, which is available on those platforms, and uh, maybe pending orders can be used, sell stops, buy stops. So there are different ways to manage risk, uh, and we can go over some ideas in that regard. Now, in terms of uh, what we cover, it's meant to be educational in nature and not to be taken as financial advisement. Uh, so what is fundamental analysis, real quick? Fundamental analysis is basically looking what's happening in the news. So when we look at, at the big headlines, the, the breaking news stories and the economic numbers that are coming out, that's basically the fundamental news. That's our fundamental analysis when we look at those things. Uh, in general, there are two main types of fundamental analysis. One we might call regular economic events, which almost each and every day there are multiple economic announcements scheduled. What's nice about those types of announcements is we know the exact time, we know the exact topic, we know what currency or region uh, it will affect most. So that type of fundamental news is a little easier to plan for in terms of scope and timing. Uh, the other type of fundamental news we might refer to as extraordinary economic news or extraordinary economic events and you know that would be something like who thought Trump was going to get impeached a second time? Well, maybe some thought that would happen, uh, but it's the first time ever in the U.S. So you know headlines like that when they break, uh, or or headlines about Brexit or the COVID pandemic, whatever it might be, the unexpected headline that hits or the expected headline, but you don't know when it was going to hit and, and the timing of it was unexpected. Uh, those are the extraordinary type of fundamental news. Or, or events that can shake the markets as well. So, and we can plan for both both types within trading strategies. Even if we don't know what the headline will be or when it will be, you can be ready with pending orders uh, just in case. So as we go through some ideas, uh, please feel free to ask questions, to give input uh, as you see fit. And I'm happy to share ideas as well with everyone who's attending. Now, I. Uh, Starting out on our main website, what we'll see, and I understand some of you that attend the webinars are experienced traders, which is great. We'll get into some of the strategies and, and movements on the live charts very soon. Some of you are new to trading, maybe even only operating on demo accounts. And so we will go over some things that I think are helpful for, for everybody uh, within the session. Now, on Avatrade's main platform, if we look at the trading platforms here, and I should say on Avatrade's main website, if we look at the platform options, uh, which you find here, we'll see Avatrade Go. That's our mobile app. It trades right on top of your MT4 or MT5 accounts. Uh, and what you do here shows up on, on those accounts. It's the same account, just a different user interface. And the same is true with our web trader platform that we'll take a look at real quick. Uh, you'll see Ava Protect. I mentioned that briefly. It's a way of protecting your trades against losses for defined time periods for a, a small premium cost. And so we'll go over some of the features that are on the app 
because they're also on the web trader platform. So if you log in here, you will see the web trader platform. Those of you who've been with Avatrade for some time, uh, from pre web trader platform, uh, you might not have it active on your account. Ask and it can be activated. Those of you who are newer to Avatrade, you will automatically have had this platform active on your account. And again, it trades right on top of your MT4, or MT5 account. It is basically the same account. What you do here shows on the other platform options. Now, what I wanted to show you here, because we're talking about risk management a bit, is if we trade on something that uh, has AVA Protect on it, let's say, like a currency pairing or uh, gold or silver, you'll, you'll see uh, that the the options in the uh, in the order window, sorry, in the order window allows you to manage risk in a way that uh, makes it easier. So if we go to forex miners, forex majors, whatever it is, let's maybe do Australian New Zealand. Let's say we want to buy on the Australian New Zealand. What we see here is. First of all, the order window calculates your margin impact for you. And so as you change the trade size, it tells you the value of the position, and it also tells you the lot size, and it shows you how much has to go to margin. Now, let's say I decide, okay, I want to trade uh, zero, a quarter of a lot, let's say 0 0.25 lots. And so then I say, okay, I have plenty for margin. Maybe I want my stop loss. Uh, a certain number of pips away. And so if I look at the price 10788, maybe I think, you know, the price, uh, if I'm buying on this, maybe I think the price won't drop into the, the 1.06 and change range. So if I say 1.0695, let's say. Okay. So I don't think it'll drop maybe below. 107 and then i look and i i can see my possible loss calculated it for me based on that trade size and my stop loss price i'm risking 174 and perhaps i look at my balance and say wow that's more than 10 percent of my balance let's lower the trade size i go down to 0.2 and i say okay now i'm risking less than 10 percent perhaps i want closer to five percent so i i change my trade size with my stop loss price and I can see, okay, maybe that's the risk I want. Possible loss 69.77 and you see it converted it to my account currency. Even though this is an Australian, New Zealand pairing, it converted it to USD risk to my stop loss. And the take profit's the same thing. Maybe I want my take profit up at uh, 1.09. 1 and I say, okay, now I see I'm, I'm possible profit 77 or so risk 69 maybe i'm comfortable with that the point is i'm fully informed as to uh, my risk management here by using this platform by using this order window and if we wanted to say maybe i don't want to stop loss maybe i want to have a protect i could be scalping one hour type trades three hours you see the protection is not so expensive 16 dollars for two days protection if I think the Australians should go flying up, maybe because China had good uh, fundamental news, which we'll look at in a little bit. So uh, the Australian dollar, if you understand the connection between Australia and China, Australia is a big exporter to China for different commodities. And so as China's economy is doing good, that tends to make the Australian dollar strengthen. So if you saw last night's numbers come late yesterday out of China and they were really good, maybe you say, okay, I'll buy on the Australian dollar for two days. My risk is only $16. My potential profit is 77 plus to my take profit mark. And if it goes plunging the wrong way and, and, and you have a negative floating of $100, doesn't matter. You, if, if the covered time period ends and you have a negative floating of 100 or 200, that's all added back to your account when the coverage ends and then you, you can keep the trade running, okay? This value over here is the value of the position, Natalie. Good question. So if you have uh, a lot size of 0 
this is the value in my account currency, USD. So 10,000 Australian, which is the margin currency, has a value of 7,768 or so USD. That's the size of the position. And then this is the amount, if you divide by the leverage, divide this value by the leverage, you get the amount that has to go to margin, which in this case is $19.42. And you might have a leverage of 400 to one on FX. You might have a value, uh, a leverage different depending where you are in the world, okay? So this is the size of the position. This is the amount that you need available to open that position, meaning the amount that has to go to margin from your free margin, okay? All right, so those are some nice tools. The pending orders are easier to open too. From that order window, you just tell it the price. You don't have to tell it what type of pending order and, and it makes it the right type for you. Uh, on this platform as well, we see some fundamental news. If you go to Trading Central, all live accounts, if you're on a demo, it won't show you. But on all live accounts, if you go to Market Buzz, you've got fundamental news right there at your fingertips, ready for whichever assets are trending the most. So if we say, oh, Apple's got a bigger bubble than many of the others. So let's click on Apple. And then it brings up all kinds of articles, recent articles. It has a time showing three hours ago, two hours ago, one hour ago. You can click on the article and read it and see what are they saying about Apple. OK, I see multiple articles about Apple and Hyundai having a, an agreement with electric cars. So that's good news for Apple. That's good news for Hyundai potentially. So you, you can find the fundamental news right there very quickly on different instruments that are trending the most within this feature on the web trader platform. And, and by the way, we're not doing technical analysis as a focus here, but uh, you'll see that there's within the trading central and the live accounts, you'll see the analyst views as well. These are signals broken down, uh, price levels, entry points, exit points, the expected direction right here with a timestamp on it, okay? It tells you this came at uh, a specific time. And you see, as you go further down, they're a little bit older. Doesn't mean they're not relevant though, uh, but new ones come throughout the day and you can change categories. Here's ideas for popular Forex. You can switch the category cryptocurrency, major FX, et cetera, okay? So uh, very cool uh, free signals through the Trading Central feature on this platform. Now, uh, what did I find as headlines for our fundamental news before we jump on the charts to take advantage of what we know about the fundamental news? Uh, European stocks lifted by stimulus hopes and China data. This just shows you how global uh, the marketplace really is. And what I mean is they're not talking about European stimulus. They're talking about stimulus in the U.S. because uh, the Democrats have taken full control now of the Senate, the House, and the presidency starting January 20th. It's expected that a lot more stimulus is coming from the U.S. for the U.S. economy. And because the U.S., uh, for the time being anyways, has the largest economy in the world, that affects not just the U.S. when stimulus is handed out in the U.S., but it, it creates bullish sentiment around the world. And so that's helping to lift European stocks now, according to this headline. And then they say also China data is helping. So it's interesting. News out of the U.S. and news out of China is helping to lift, to lift uh, European stocks and indices. And uh, if, if we want to look, well, what is this China data? We can look right here. This is uh, from yesterday, and there are economic calendars. There's one on the web trader platform, uh, or, or there are economic calendars in a lot of locations. I clicked on yesterday, and you see here, China, better than expected news on exports, better than expected news on imports, better than expected news on trade balance. That's strong news for China, okay? And that's why we were talking about the Australian dollar, right? The Australian dollar tends to be bullish when there's good news out of China. There's a, a phrase that a lot of traders use, uh, as China goes, so goes the Australian dollar, okay? The other phrase is when the U.S. catches a cold, uh, the, the, or when the U.S. sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. Uh, it's another common phrase. And, and it's the idea that because China and the U.S. are two of the largest economies in the world, they affect others, it's a ripple effect. And specifically China tends to affect Australia 
uh, quite a bit. So if China's economy is looking strong, maybe when you do your technical analysis, then you keep that fundamental news in mind when trading on the Australian dollar. And you might have a preference then to trade up on the Australian dollar from support levels rather than trading down from resistance levels. And perhaps you find a higher rate of success that way by going with the wind, so to speak. Okay, uh, there's another headline out of Reuters, stimulus helps stocks shrug off impeachment chaos. We mentioned uh, that you know Trump's the first president ever to be impeached twice. Uh, I guess some, he can brag about something, I guess. Uh, we're looking at uh, the fact that that really didn't affect the markets, and it and it really shouldn't. The first time he was impeached was really a joke of an impeachment. I think it was something that, that was very political. This time, I think it's probably more of a good reason for it. But in both cases, he's not going to be removed from presidency. And, and so what if he was this time? Because Biden is sworn in in one week. So it's not like it really affects anything in terms of the market. So uh, the focus, according to this headline, and I would agree, is more on the stimulus and less on the impeachment chaos. And so it makes sense. If we look uh, some other news, France uh, out of France, it, they're saying they expect 6% growth target for 2021 as not being out of touch, not being out of reach. And uh, we'll see as we look at the economic calendar for today's activities, you'll see here that there are some Big announcements in the EU, not really an announcement, European Central Bank Monetary Policy Statement, more of a statement than an announcement, uh, but that's a big deal. And that's why that headline is there, okay? We're talking about 6% growth target and you've got monetary policy statement com coming out of the EU, if I can find the right page, today, okay? This is in New York time that we're looking at. So that would be uh at five hours it'd be 12 30 uh so that that's that's occurring uh you know basically as we speak so uh that's going on through the day some some ideas out of the central bank and then we're looking at the us a number of announcements coming in, in including initial jobless claims etc and then we've got monetary uh information coming out of the us later that's also going to be interesting to listen to. The Fed Chair Powell will speak. Okay. Now we can jump on the charts with the understanding of, of that fundamental news that basically there's some optimism because of stimulus out of the US and good economic numbers out of China. Okay. And if we look at the futures, they're green, right? Look here, quick snapshot. Futures are green. U.S. dollar is flat and volatility is pretty flat, up less than uh, half a percent. So not a lot of fear or volatility on the markets. Futures are more green than red. And so with those headlines of positive momentum out of China and, and positive momentum about potential stimulus, that's something to keep in mind as we look at the charts. So as we pull up, I've got my MT4 account here. Uh, let me read a couple of these questions that have come in. Yeah, sure. Ranjit, we'll get into crude oil. Uh, we'll do that next after we look at the Dow Jones here. The UK is not as uh, correlated with China as much as the, uh, the Australian dollar. So uh, I think what's driving the pound strength is more the Brexit situation rather than looking specifically at China. Okay, good question. So uh, as we look then at the Dow Jones, they, these are four hour candles. If we look at say one week candles, we see we're at an all time high basically, okay? This is all time high after all time high, climbing, climbing, climbing. A lot of that spurred by stimulus or hopes of more stimulus. Then as we go to one day candles, we see there's hesitation at the top of this all time high. There's a wick, a wick, a wick, a wick, a wick. It's going sideways. And we go to four hour candles, we see that. There's a resistance level here, 
Okay, resistance and down, resistance and down. It has not broken this level. If you think there will be uh, positive momentum, maybe announcement of more stimulus coming, some, some headline that we don't know. Remember we said there's two types of fundamental news, the type we know and the type that could come at any time that we don't know about. So the, the fundamental news we know, uh, and that was scheduled, European Central Bank is talking today. Uh, the monetary policy folks in the U.S. will be talking today about monetary policy. So all of those things we know are happening, but we don't know what exactly they will say, right? We don't know what they'll say. If they say things that the market likes and talk more about stimulus in the U.S., what do you think will happen to this resistance level? What do you think happens to this resistance level if the Fed Chair Powell comes out and says, for sure, we've got more stimulus coming and we're going to keep interest rates at zero? What do you think happens to the markets then? Yes, I agree. Uh, potentially, that type of news could cause this resistance level to get broken through. It's waiting on something. It's waiting on big news either to pull down or to go up. Okay. So what kind of pending order? You don't have to guess whether it's going to break to a new high. What kind of pending order would pick up the momentum? And if it breaks this resistance and hits, say, this price, what kind of pending order would buy if it hits that breaks through the resistance? You can have it programmed to buy from up here. If it breaks the resistance, you're in. With the idea that you would wait for it to break to a higher point to confirm that, hey, there must have been good news because it broke to an all-time high again, what kind of pending order would buy from up there? If I go switch it to pending order, there are four types. What kind of pending order buys from the higher point? It would be the buy stop, okay? Buy stop buys from a higher point. So I might say if the markets hit 31,170, 31,170. If the Dow Jones hits 31,170, I'll put my stop loss back below that broken resistance. Maybe 30,070, 100 points down. 30,070. Okay, so I'm risking 100 down. My take profit, I could just do, uh, let's say, three times what I'm risking. 31,470. You could easily get a 300 point climb on the Dow Jones if there's really good news from the, the Fed uh, speech today, if there's good news for the market. Okay, so there it is, I'm ready. I don't have to guess whether good news will come today. I know there's big news coming, out of the European Union, the central bank talking, out of the US with the, the monetary policy folks having a talk. So if there is good news for the market, then it should break this resistance, then I'll buy, right? That's the idea of knowing what fundamental news is coming and preparing for it. And so I don't know what they'll say yet, so I'm not going to guess. I'll wait and see if it breaks the resistance and then I'd be in, okay? And maybe you cheat it up just a little to be passed this wick by enough that it doesn't catch and, and buy without actually breaking the resistance. So get your entry up enough that you know it broke the resistance before it buys. And then your strategy then is to have your stop loss back below that resistance. And you take profit at a spot uh, that makes sense to you. There's no resistance level to look for or to take profit before because it's at all time highs. So there is no resistance above. So you just have to pick a number where uh, you're, you'd be satisfied with the profit, with the return. Okay. Uh, so I like that setup here. Now, if you're a purely technical trader, you might sell right now on this, meaning here's a support level down here. There's resistance, support. Resistance up here. This is support down here. It's tested once, twice, three times and held. So if there's no big news, then this could easily push back down here. So a purely technical trader who's not paying attention to fundamentals might sell on this right now. 
put your stop loss above the resistance and you sell. We're doing a fundamental webinar and the fundamentals don't tell us to sell on the Dow right now, right? And uh, if, if you go against the fundamentals, many times uh, it doesn't work out for you, okay? But technical trader would sell on this because it very well could meander around in this range until we have breaking news, right? So it, it, it's not uh, a bad idea to trade on purely technical levels, resistance up here, support down here, if there isn't any big news for a few hours, because it very well could work its way down over the next few hours, just for, from a technical trading sense. Let's look at oil then, that was a request. And we see oil pulled back a little. Which way should oil go today? Optimism about stimulus, optimism about good news out of China, who's a big energy user. Which way should oil go if there's this optimism? And the OPEC nations already agreed that they're not going to increase production for a while. Yeah, probably up. So listen, it, I, I think technically speaking, this isn't a bad spot, right? If you wanted to buy on oil, maybe I do uh, 100 barrels. 0 0.1, okay, I buy on oil. Where would I put my stop loss? Just below this wick, right? Just below this wick is my stop loss. Here's the old resistance here, resistance, and it dropped, resistance, and then once it broke through, it became support. You see it comes down, back up, down, back up, down, back up. So this is a relative support area here. The fundamentals say oil should probably go back up now. And you've got a nice support level here. So you put your stop loss down here. Your take profit you could put at today's high. There's the take profit. And if you're wondering, if you just click on your entry point, left click and drag, it creates the stop loss and take profit lines for you. You could drag them to the spot you want them. That way you save time. You don't have to go in and manually type the prices. So. Uh, this is a scalping move. Take profit at the first resistance. It's at a spot that it already reached this week, right? These are four-hour candles. So it was just a couple days ago, it was up here, right? A day ago, even. So we're looking at the price could get up near 54 in pretty short order. And the fundamental news is on your side. You might lose, right? It's a limited risk, but if if you've got the fundamental news on your side, more times than not, you should win, right? You're never going to win every trade, but the idea in trading is not to win every trade. It's to have a strategy that wins more profit than it loses uh, in losses. And, and in that regard, you don't even have to be right 50% of the time. You see, I'm risking half of what my potential profit is. I could lose twice and win once, and I would break even with this type of setup. So, you know, if I'm even right 40% of the time with this type of risk reward, then, then I'm profiting. And, you know, if you can make even 1% profit a day by putting the fundamental news as, a, as the wind at your back and then getting proper technical entry points in the direction that the fundamental news says, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make 1% per day on your account. And if you make 1% per day, there's about 20 trading days in a month. You're talking about 20% gain each month if you average 1% profit a day. 20% a month's a great return. And you're not risking much on any one move. You're risking very little. And you know, 20% a month or 1% a day average, that more than doubles your balance in less than six months. More than double, you can more than double your investment. So you don't have to be overly aggressive. You have to be smart with your risk management, with your entry points, and with watching the fundamental news so that you can try and come out a little bit more on top each day than on the bottom. And that's what trading's really about if you're looking to have success long term. Yes, I could fully leverage my trade and take a five lot position and buy, and hopefully it goes up, and I might be right. But that type of trading can blow an account as well. So uh, risk management makes sense. Uh, you know, if I had a larger side, size trade here, if I did go in more aggressive, I probably would have a hedge position down here. I would put a sell stop. If it breaks 
my support level, I might not have a stop loss. I might have a sell stop that now I'm selling the same size as I'm buying. So if it, if it plunges, then I could take profit on the sell, which cancels out the losses on the buy. And then I can leave the buy open once it reaches the next support level and let it go back up. Okay. So now this is a four hour chart, Michelle, four hour chart. So there are different ways to risk manage. You can trade more aggressively with trade size, but in some way you better manage the risk on the other side. Okay. And I, I'm still a proponent of 1% per day gain on, on your investment is actually really good. Okay. All right. So uh, something else I wanted to look at is the Euro USD. We've got monetary policy coming today. They're talking about it probably as we're speaking. So look at the support level. We saw the headlines. The European Union's happy about stimulus in the US and what happens to the US dollar strength if there's more stimulus? What happens to the strength of any currency if you print a bunch of it and hand it out? That, that fundamental news, understanding that the Democrats in the US will almost assuredly print out more US dollars and hand them out as stimulus. What happens to the strength of the USD if that happens? Do currencies strengthen or weaken when you print a bunch of them and hand them out? Yeah, they weaken. They weaken. Michelle, the opposite. Uh, if if yeah, the, you're right. The Euro USD might go up. I've got you. The the strength of the USD would weaken if there's more stimulus. Typically, right now. Uh, maybe the weakening is cooked in, meaning USD already weakened with the idea that we already knew there was going to be more stimulus. Uh, but, you know, if the Democrats say, hey, let's pass out $2,000 to every U.S. citizen like they were pushing for, uh, that, that can't have much of a strengthening effect on the USD, most likely. Right. That's the idea. So if, if you understand that the European Union is happy right now about stimulus, and thinks that'll help their economy do well, but it's the US dollar that's actually printing, it makes sense that the Euro then could easily strengthen against the USD, okay? So maybe I take uh, a, a position based on that fundamental news and buy on the Euro USD. And this is more of a longer term move, right? But I don't have to risk much. I could put this below this little support level here, Support, 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 support. That's on the four hour candle. So it's been there for some time, for some days. It hasn't broken below the support level until you go all the way back to December 15th. So it's held for a number of weeks, this price level. And so why should it break below that support if the USD has reason to weaken and the Euro has reason to strengthen? Okay, so fundamentally and technically, because this is a nice support level, it's a nice technical entry point as well. I don't have to risk much to buy on the Euro USD, and I could put my stop loss up here. Like I said, this is maybe a more patient move. Okay, that's hundreds of pips. Okay, 1.2153 to 1.2339, that's almost 200 pips. Okay, that times, times however much you're making per pip, right? In this case, a quarter uh, of a lot, that's two and a half dollars per pip times almost 200 pips. That's a nice little return. Uh, you would pick a trade size that makes sense. So you have the percent risk for your balance that makes sense. And with the, the web trader platform, remember I showed you, you can put the trade size, put your stop loss price down here somewhere and play with the trade size until you see the amount of risk you want. And put the, the take profit where, where it makes sense to you at a resistance level, and you can see what the potential profit will be as well, okay? So uh, fundamental news says probably Euro could gain against the USD in the coming days or weeks as uh, the policy of the Biden administration is more understood, okay? So, and that's only in a week's time. So within a couple of weeks, there could be a huge stimulus for the uh, U.S. economy. And so uh, that stimulus would be printing USD, which could drive the euro to climb against the USD. Very simple move, combining 
proper technical entry point with fundamental news as we know it. You should come out on top more often than not if you can put together these types of fundamental and technical uh, entry points and uh, alignment so that your, your technical entry point and direction of trading aligns with what you believe the fundamental news is uh, or will be, it gives you a much better chance at, at long-term success. Any questions before uh, we move on maybe to another instrument? We're gonna talk about the double albatross. Any questions? Well, I must be good because everyone understands. Or, or you're just slow typers. Okay, GBP USD. Let's look at that. We'll finish on the GBP USD. Uh, just, just to give a quick overview, uh, we could see the S. We looked at the Dow Jones, S and P 500. It's the same thing. Resistance here, probably some dropping before the FOMC statement, uh, but likely a bounce up because the FOMC statement probably will talk about supporting the economy through COVID, keeping interest rates low, no guarantee. But if that's what they talk about, you'll see markets respond most likely favorably to that. Uh, and so uh, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P 500, huge potential for new all-time highs today. If the feds in the US when they talk today have positive news. If they don't, then okay, it doesn't go up. You can put your buy stops up here and be ready for it. You also could put, what kind of pending order could you buy if it comes down to this support level? If it drops to this support level here, you could buy with a buy limit pending order, okay? Buy limit pending order would buy from down here, okay? Again, in the direction of the fundamental news, rather than selling, you wait in case it drops, then you buy in the direction that the fundamental news says it should go, okay? What if unexpected news comes and this support level breaks? Put a sell stop down here. Remember, there could be unexpected headlines, something that shakes the markets and causes a sell-off. Well, then put a sell stop here because you don't know what kind of fundamental news might come. I can put a buy limit from this support level with the news I know and a buy stop up here with the news I know both in the buy direction. And then also in case something flips the markets, I put a sell stop down here below the support level. So if the support level breaks, I sell. It sells automatically for me, okay? Now GBP USD, let's have a look. We see resistance here on the four hour candles. And we see support here, okay? Why is this a support level? Because it's an old resistance level. You see resistance, drop. Here, resistance, drop. Here, it was resistance. And once it broke above, then it becomes, you see these wicks, it became support. Then it took a lot of momentum. Look at the size of that candle it took to break below. So now we come back over here and we see it's acting as support again. It tested, back up, tested, back up, tested, back up, tested again, back up. If you believe the USD should weaken, okay, you might trust this support level. If that's the case, let's zoom in, one hour candles. There, now you see the support. Over here, it's resistance, resistance. It breaks above that resistance right here, and then it becomes support, support, support okay so uh maybe you put a buy limit pending order to buy from here with your stop loss down here and you take profit somewhere up here or you do a market move if you think it'll just go up now so uh that's up to the patience level uh, that you have as a trader so if you believe usd should weaken and you trust this support level right here which goes back quite a ways it has a reason why this is a support level, then you could just simply say, I'm going to buy on the pound against the USD and I'm going to put my stop loss below this support and I'm going to let this run for the next two weeks, right? 
through the Biden inauguration uh, and swearing in and into the new stimulus that's probably going to come in the U.S., which could help the pound go flying up against the USD. No guarantee, but we've got a limited risk here. If it breaks the support level now, okay, re-enter later. The same concept can work. Remember, you don't have to be right every time. You can come out on top if you're right the second try or the third try. Even if this drop that hit my stop loss doesn't mean it was a bad idea. Then, then I'll probably put a buy stop up here. And when it breaks back above that support level, then I'll buy again. Because eventually, if there's more stimulus in the U.S., that could be a very good move. You don't always get in at the exact right time every time. And sometimes you need to re-enter. Uh, a failed first attempt doesn't mean it was the, the wrong thing to do fundamentally or technically. Okay? So we go back to four-hour candles, and we say we've got our stop loss down here below this support level. And our take profit, it depends if you're scalping or in it for long term. I like the idea of looking at these one week candles and saying, wow, I might take profit. If it breaks this resistance, it could go flying up here. Look, this is the next resistance level way up here. Look at the one week candles. Look at this plunge in the history. It plunged down to get to this price. So if it breaks back above that price, it could go flying back up to this next resistance level. No guarantee, but look at the potential. Small risk huge potential to climb on this. And there's a good fundamental news reason why the pound could easily climb against the USD and actually a couple of them. There's a Brexit deal now, that's good news for the pound. And there could be stimulus coming, which is bad news for the USD strength. So good potential on this move. That, that was a nice suggestion to look at that instrument. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, I think this is a good spot to stop today. Uh, gold is another one that's been moving sideways, kind of waiting for what's going to happen in the market. Uh, you know, in general, the, the idea that it, there's expected more stimulus coming in the U S that tends to drive gold up. Why? Because gold is an inflationary safe haven. If, if there's expected to be inflation of the USD because of stimulus, weakening of a currency causes inflation uh within the economy makes everything cost more right instead of if the us dollar is worth less then you need more of them to buy things that's inflation uh gold tends to rise in in those sorts of circumstances so you might look for nice support levels on gold to take a shot uh with with the weakening usd for gold to potentially rise all right everybody thank you for attending uh, till next time, good luck with your trading.